Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. I have the SWAT T tourniquet here. I want to do a review for you, kind of give you the pros and the cons of this tourniquet. So before I go through and show you the SWAT T tourniquet, I just want to give you a quick refresher on exactly what we're doing with a tourniquet when we apply it. Now I've done videos of this in the past. I will put a link to the annotation because it's a complete video, but this is just going to be a quick refresher. So here is our artery. It's a high pressure system. It's pumping blood out and a high pressure, so it is flowing like crazy, squirting bright red blood. So this is the muscle around that artery. So when you put a tourniquet on, what you're doing is you're trying to collapse that muscle just like that and close off the artery. So that's what you're doing. You're collapsing the whole muscle mass around it to occlude the blood flow, which is why it's easier for that wider tourniquet to occlude this amount of muscle mass. You can see why the narrower tourniquets, it would be harder to completely occlude blood flow, but the wider tourniquets work well for this. So this is my example. We're going to be using it. This tourniquet is not good for self-application. Now, I really like this tourniquet for buddy aid, but for self-application, you cannot get that first tuck done right. It's a lot harder. That's where the, the soft tee and the cat come into their prime is those self-applications. But for buddy aid, I really like this one. You know, if you were put on a leg or something, yeah, you can put this on yourself. But for an arm, man, it's just really difficult to get this on by yourself. And I'm not saying it's not impossible, but there are other tourniquets that make it easier for self-aid. So we're gonna say this is our extremity here. We'll say this is our amputation or injury here that's squirting bright red blood. This is towards the body. You wanna obviously be between the injury and the body and then be a few inches back, at least three inches back. Because what happens is the body's trying to fix itself. So it will take this artery and sometimes it will cut back in on itself. So if you put the tourniquet too close to the injury, it's still pumping blood into the muscle cavity here, so you haven't really done anything. Now you're just bleeding internally. So you want to get a few inches back, at least three inches, to get back on top of this. So put your band on. Your first rotation around, then you want to come back across. That's going to hold it in place. So then we pull this really tight. You can now see that we have circles and we have squares. Come back around. Pull it tight. If you had to, you can go make it a little bit wider. Try to keep it as smooth as possible. Once you get to your last band, you can either hold on to it or pull this back like I'm doing here and you tuck this in. So you can see we're starting to press this down. If you still have bleeding and this is not controlled, really don't want to loosen this tourniquet back up. What you could do is put another SWAT T tourniquet on the outside here, right on top of it, or I would put one going closer to the body if you could. All right, so where this tourniquet works really well is for buddy aid. It also, of course, is going to work for kids, works for canines as well, but for buddy aid, the SWAT T tourniquet works really well. So we're going to say that he has an injury here, the squirting bright red blood. Like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of bleeding. So we would expose it if we have time, cut it, rip it, whatever you need to do, expose the injury. And then the tourniquet is going to go on the towards the body. So we put it on. Now, obviously, I'm not going to put it tight, make a tourniquet out of it, but you would pull this super tight to make it stretchy. And I'll show you a close up of what the circles and the triangles are going to look like. So here's a little bit closer look at the drawing that I was going by. You can see tourniquet is if ovals turn into circles. So if this oval here is turned into a circle and then the diamonds turn into squares. So you can see we're there. So there's two things that the SWAT tourniquet has going for it, and that is that it's wide. Remember, the wider the tourniquet, the less pressure it actually cuts off blood flow. And that when it gets pulled tight, it actually provides even pressure all the way across the tourniquet, which is a great plus for this. 
There are some tourniquets that just provide pressure on the edge of the tourniquet, and there's some that provide a lot on the edge and maybe a little bit in the middle, but none of them provide as much pressure gradually all the way across as good as the SWAT tourniquet. So the other good thing I like about the SWAT T tourniquet is you can use it as a pressure bandage. So let's say that you're going to wound pack this, preferably in like a joint area, so like the armpits or the groin, things like that work really well for wound packing because if it's in an extremity, just put a tourniquet on it and move on. You don't want to worry about wound packing a femur that's bleeding out right here and you could just put a tourniquet on it. Okay, that's not the best thing to do. If this is your femur, this is the top part of your leg, and you're bleeding right through here, don't wound pack that. You put a tourniquet on it. So, we're working with a joint here. You wound pack it. I've done a video on doing that. So, we put our combat gauze on. You wrap this around. Now, you don't want to pull it quite so tight. You're pulling it tight, but not enough where these stretch out and this oval here turns into a circle. So then we can put this on. You get some good, good solid pressure on there. But there again, I'm not getting squares. I'm not turning that oval in. And then, sorry, I'm not, it's actually going to end on the back side. Tuck it in. Now, with a pressure bandage like this, this is you should still have a pulse at the end of the foot. So with a pressure bandage like this. We're not occluding blood flow here, we're just holding pressure. So we're still getting arterial blood flow through. So you should still have a pulse on the end of that arm, the end of the leg, things like that. So you should still have a pulse there because you're not occluding a distal pulse. If you've occluded the pulse there, you now have a tourniquet applied. So you can check pulse after you've applied this pressure bandage. The other good thing about the SWAT tourniquet is the fact that it folds so flat. I mean, this would make a great everyday carry tourniquet because you can see I can roll it up. And this fits in my pocket very easily. It lays flat. You could even roll this up with combat galls if you wanted to. Put this in your pocket and it's a great EDC tourniquet. When you open up your SWAT T tourniquet, inside of it does come with a band that goes on the wrist. Um, it has like vital signs, time, things like that. Uh, blood type of bleeds on there as well. I lost that piece of paper, so I apologize. But it's it's a bracelet that you can write on. Now, obviously, you wouldn't want to delay transport or delay any further treatment to write on that. But it is there to kind of help you keep an eye on about what time and your vital signs after applying the SWAT T tourniquet.